tuning in to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. One of the terms that you hear from time to time on the Ag PhD show is base saturation. When we're looking at soil tests, it's one of those things that helps us understand what we need to change first to really make an impact on yield. We're going to talk about base saturation and what you need to know today. Well, as we go into the year 2018, we want to look back at 2017 and talk a little about the year in review. There were a lot of things that happened in 2017. Another interesting year. We'll talk about it today. And once again, we've got a tough to control weed of the week. We'll show you how to stop this weed later in the show. But first, here's our Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk a little about the Ag PhD soils clinics that are coming up this winter. And here's where I want to start with this. If you're a farmer, how are you making your fertilizer recommendations? If you don't know how to read a soil test, I would challenge you to say, are you just guessing at your fertility program? Well, as tight as margins are in the farm today, we can't afford to guess. We need to have really good information and make great decisions when it comes to fertilizer. We had an interesting thing happen this year. We had a, a plot in just a corner of a field. It was a soybean plot and it yielded oh, average about 65 bushels. And we were talking to the farmer who had the rest of the field and he said, yeah, he goes, you know, the beans were, were okay this year. And we said, well, what'd you get for yield? And he said, well, just about got 40. And I thought, wow, what did we do different that we got 65 bushel beans versus 40? Now, certainly in the plot, there's a number of different varieties. And, and obviously, if you've got 10 different varieties picked, you're probably going to find a couple that might beat somebody that only gets to pick one. So that, that would be a little bit of it, but not a huge amount, not 25 bushels. But then we looked at the fertility program. What would you do for fertilizer? Well, I fertilized last year for my corn. Well, how would you do, turn out for yield? I had the best yield I've ever had. So what'd you put on this year for, for soybeans? Nothing. Didn't put anything out for soybeans. I, I did a two-year plan last year. But here's the thing. A lot of us are not taking into account the kinds of yields that we're pulling off the soil now, and we need to step up our fertility program, but how to do it and how to spend that money right, that's what we're going to talk about at our soils clinics. Okay, so you may say, you know what? I've got somebody that handles my fertilizer recommendations. Well, who is that person? In most cases, it's your fertilizer dealer, the person that's selling you fertilizer. And I would just ask you to do this. Just do me a favor. Go talk to five of your neighbors who are also buying fertilizer from the same place and find out what they got for fertilizer recommendations on their ground. I'm going to guess they have different soils, they have different yield goals than you, and you probably all got the same fertilizer recommendations or very, very close. Also, take a look at micronutrients. Take a look at uh, some of the secondary nutrients like sulfur. Are you getting recommendations on those at all? Where's the soil test data? What is your fertilizer person using to base their recommendations off of? So these are the important questions that you've got to ask. I just look at our own farm. Until we started doing a good job of soil sampling and getting complete soil tests done, we didn't have the kind of yields that we do today, nor did we have the kind of profit that we do right now. And sure, I'd love to have $7 corn. We'd all have more profit. But my point is, we don't today. We have to have better decisions, better decision making today, if we're going to survive on the farm going forward. So I really, really encourage you, either do some of your own soil testing or get a third party to do some of your soil testing, get complete tests done, and then learn how to read a soil test. Because how many dollars are you gonna spend on fertilizer in the next 20 years? It's probably millions of dollars. If you're gonna spend millions of dollars on anything, shouldn't you know about that? Shouldn't you be an expert in that? We can teach you how to do that at the Ag PhD Soils Clinics. And by the way, they're free. For more information about the Ag PhD Soils Clinics and to pre-register, visit agphd.com. Just click on the, the events tab, look down the list there for a soils clinic that's near you. There's a lot of information we'll cover at the soils clinics, but what we won't show you is how to stop our weed of the week. So we'll talk about that on today's program. Can you identify this week's weed? Nodulation. It's essential for nitrogen fixation in soybeans, but how can you help it happen in your fields? 
Monsanto BioAg offers inoculants that answer that question. Microbial seed applied solutions that work to establish high populations of rhizobia in your fields, helping with optimum nodulation and increased performance in your soybeans. Learn how inoculants powered by nature can help you at MonsantoBioAg.com slash inoculate. Our Morton is so much more to us than just a building. It's a place where we spend time with friends. It's a place where we hold family gatherings. It's become very important to us. Morton Buildings. For work. For life. For generations. Contact us now during our annual sales event to save on your next building. This agro liquid line is something special. A lot of really impressive playmakers. Take a look at Sure K. This guy is an enigma. But wrap your head around the exceptionally high plant response when compared to conventional potassium sources, the research proven plant availability, plus flexible application options and mixing capabilities. Really stellar performance stats. Sure K is a true standout, and that's a winning goal on any field. Leading the charge in strip tillage for more than a decade, the Soil Warrior brings the future to your farm today. Grow your incentives, not weeds. Earn an additional $6 per acre in cash back when you apply Extendamax herbicide with Vapor Grip technology on your Roundup Ready to Extend soybeans, along with endorsed herbicides from Roundup Ready plus Crop Management Solutions. Now you have the right tools to manage weeds and your bottom line. Visit GrowYourIncentives.com to see your total incentives opportunity. Increase your productivity with Hypro's Dual React Control System. The dual nozzle body design allows you to drive at the speed you want while maintaining the rate and droplet size you need. Hypro, helping you spray better. 2017 was once again an interesting year. I guess, Darren, where I wanted to start is the HPPD price crash. So what we saw is products like Callisto and the generic Callisto products, all the mesotrione products came way down in price and they're coming down more in 2018. The reason why this is such a big deal on the farm is I just think about our own weed control program. Hey, I wasn't doing a lot with HPPDs before. Now as cheap as they are, I can throw in a little HPPD along with some dicamba. I have a tremendous program. It's awesome. I'm so excited about that and how it's changed things on our farm and reduced our costs. All right, two words of caution here, then I'm going to ask you a question. So one word of caution, whenever anything comes down in price, we see guys go to that mode of action a lot more. Oh, let's do that pre, let's yep. do that post. That's, no, going to end up, no, that's no. going to end up with problems. The other right. thing is, don't get comfortable with just one product and say, well, it's definitely Resicor or it's definitely Halex or, or whatever the product of choice may be for you because you know what? From year to year, that price may change dramatically and you may say, wow, this one was several dollars cheaper one year and now it's more expensive. So how do yeah. we avoid running into those problems with HPPD and, and having more issues with resistance? Well, you just, you just have to rotate modes of action. It's not that tough. Use multiple modes of action. Action. But you know, I, I'm going to take this a step further. Okay, so we've got other products that have come off patent and come down in price, like fungicide. So now, I mean, you're almost crazy to not use fungicide as inexpensive as it is. We're talking maybe two, three bucks for a half rate of a really great product like Quadris that just a few years ago was 15, maybe even 20 dollars an acre. Now you can get a full rate for five or six bucks. So these things really change your management practices on the farm and hopefully they're going to increase your yields at a low cost. Well, certainly on the prices, you need to check everything out each year and start fresh. And it's hard to do because uh, I know how it is on our farm. It's, well, we did this and this and this last year. Let's plan on that again because it really worked. Hold on. There may be some different options here that could even be better for less money. Well, let's continue talking about 2017 and that year in review. White mold was the worst that we've ever seen it on our farm and throughout the upper Midwest, white mold was horrendous in soybeans and a number of other crops. So what are we gonna do going forward to manage this? We use some contents, it's a biological that literally eats the sclerotia. 
I wasn't super happy with that. Yes, it, you we're going to get some activity out of that, but I think the most important thing we can do is pick great varieties that have more white mold tolerance. Maybe if you have to, go away from soybeans or, or susceptible crops for a couple years. And then probably the biggest thing is use the right fungicide. Endure is by far the best. I know it's super crazy expensive, but in some cases it's well worth it. On our own farm, we lost 60 bushels per acre in the white mold spots. 60, that's no joke. We were going along, everything was 80, 85, great. We literally went down to 20. Okay, well, if you're gonna drop 60 bushels, isn't it worth 20 to $40 an acre to go spray some Endura, at least in those spots? Well, it certainly is. Now, when you talk about picking better varieties, here's a real challenge. What we're looking at is no varieties that have resistance. So we've got to find some that are more tolerant, and it's tough to get good ratings because one year you have white mold, the next year you don't, and, and it's tough for even the breeders to get a good handle on this. So we're looking for soybeans with good standability, with upright branching, in general, those are the ones that can tolerate white mold better. All right, the biggest issue we had in 2017 was dicamba. Fortunately, a lot of the volatility issues led to yield increase on beans that got cupped or at least no yield loss. So that was good news, but we can't continue to have those kind of volatility issues. There are label changes going forward into 2018, and we would just really encourage you, hey, pay attention to where that wind is, not only today, but maybe into the next day as well, and I think that's gonna make a difference. Even saying the word dicamba really makes some people sensitive because honestly, where there was physical drift, we did see yield loss, there's no question about that. But where we had some volatility and just a very tiny little rate drifted over and cupped some leaves, in most cases, we did not see any yield loss and in some cases, we even saw better yields. Well, the reason why we saw better yields too was weed control on the dicamba beans. I'm not saying on the other beans, but on the dicamba beans, we have to get better weed control with these resistant weeds. So we really encourage you going forward, switch to Liberty, switch to Extend, or switch to the new Enlist if, if and when that gets labeled because straight Roundup just isn't cutting it anymore. However, I would say we did see great results for guys that use three pre-emerge herbicides. That really dramatically reduced the number of resistant weeds and made it a lot easier to get those weeds under control post-emerge. That has been very encouraging. There's more acres using additional modes of action. Instead of just one or maybe two, now we're seeing more guys go to three or possibly even four modes of action pre. We're seeing much cleaner fields and it allows a little more flexibility in the timing of that post-emerge application. Okay, when we start talking, so we've talked a little about corn, a little about soybeans, uh, just a little bit on wheat real quickly. We saw the spring wheat price come way back up. I, I would just say the biggest thing we've seen over the last few years in wheat is just overall management. If you want to intensively manage your wheat, you can do really well in terms of yield. Well, and, so and here too, Brian, when, when you go into the year and say, well, we're not going to make any money on wheat, you're not. When you make a plan to, well, I'm not going to spend any money on fertilizer, I'm not going to spend any money on weed control, you've got to get a great start. No matter what crop you're raising, use the right seed treatments. They're so inexpensive. It really doesn't cost a ton of money. Get things started off yep, right, but, and then yes, if you need to cut back later, if you've eliminated all the early season stress, one little stress here or there late season isn't as big a deal for you, but if you've got lots of stresses early that you've allowed to build in your field, you're gonna have lots of problems. But it's everything. I mean, it's not just seed treatment. You need to do a really great job on fertility. You need to look at drainage. You gotta get your diseases under control early. There are just so many things you can do. Again, we really encourage you at least try part of your farm, intensively managing your wheat. The guys that are, are having much better success. One of the things many farmers got a refresher on this year was controlling our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to stop it coming up later in the show. About two or three years ago, I went ahead and I started planting nothing but Liberty. And I haven't regretted it since. We've had no problems with uh, resistance. All the resistance mare's tail that we had out there, velvet leaf or cockleburrs or pigweed. I clean up the fields. I didn't have to go back. One application took care of the weeds. If I wasn't getting control on weeds and would have to fight it all year long, I wouldn't hesitate to guess that we'd probably be losing uh, at least 25% of yield. First time I ever used Liberty Link beans, I had it right next to the Roundup beans. The uh, Liberty Link beans were uh, standing about twice as tall. They had uh, twice as many pods on it. That was the thing that sold me on it. If it can do it there on that tough ground, 
let's just start spreading it over the whole place. And that's what I did. And I went 100% and I haven't looked back. There are 6,272,640 square inches in an acre. We count it. Why? Because we designed the Tiger Mate 255 field cultivator and 2000 series early riser planter to maximize every single one. So when you create the most level seed bed in the industry and target a nickel size area to plant a seed and never miss, you'll know in high efficiency farming, there's one name to count on, Case IH. Rethink productivity. Learn more at caseih.com slash every inch. Grow your incentives, not weeds. Earn an additional $6 per acre in cash back when you apply Extendamax herbicide with Vapor Grip technology on your Roundup Ready to Extend soybeans, along with endorsed herbicides from Roundup Ready Plus Crop Management Solutions. Now you have the right tools to manage weeds and your bottom line. Visit GrowYourIncentives.com to see your total incentives opportunity. One of the big terms that we like to talk about when we're looking at soils and fertility is balance. And balance is one of those things that, oh, what does it really mean? Well, when you look at base saturation, we're looking at the binding sites on that soil and what nutrients are being held there. And knowing the balance of that is pretty important. When you look at some key nutrients like magnesium and calcium, potassium, and then hydrogen and sodium as well, you can see these positively charged nutrients that are tied up on the negatively charged soil particles. So very often when we talk about soils here at Ag PhD, we talk about two things. Number one is the amount of nutrients, and number two is the balance of nutrients in your soil. So the amount of nutrients, that's relatively easy to figure. We say, okay, you need 200 pounds. You go, all right, I throw 200 pounds out there, piece of cake. But when it comes to balance, you're probably saying, um, that sounds super crazy complicated. How am I supposed to balance nutrients in my soil? Well, using this base saturation test is one of the ways you can balance nutrients in your soil. So we have certain kind of ranges that we would really like to see your soil in to have an ideal situation for good crop growth. All right, let's get into those numbers that Brian was talking about. The first one I wanna start with is calcium because that's the one you want the most of in your soil. It's a very, very important nutrient. And uh, you're probably thinking, wait a minute, we haven't talked about N, P, and K. No, no, we're gonna start with calcium. We need to have at least 65% calcium in your soil and no more than 80%. So we want it somewhere in that range. And if we've got that to start with, now the other nutrients all start to fall in place. With magnesium, depending on how heavy or light your soil is, uh, and this one is a little bit complicated, we wanna see at least 12% magnesium, probably not more than 18 or 20%. Now, if we're in a really light soil, we want to be towards the higher end of that range. And if we're in a heavy soil, we want to be towards the lower end. All right, then we drop down to the last three nutrients. You don't need near as many of these in your soil. Let's talk about one that you could be almost at zero. That's hydrogen. When your hydrogen hits zero, that means that your soil pH is seven or above. So for most crops, we're looking at 6.3 to 6.8 pH is ideal, so you should find your hydrogen in the range of about 2% to 10% if you are in that pH range of 6.3 to 6.8. Remember that anything below 7, that's an acid soil, that just means you have hydrogen in it. So if you see a very high hydrogen number, let's say it's 20%, well that tells you that your pH is too low for most crops. Now that's not all crops. Okay, so let's say you want to raise blueberries and 5.5 is the ideal pH. Well, then you're probably going to want more hydrogen in your soil because you want that pH down. Anyway, the last two would be sodium. You want that number less than 1%. If you have high sodium levels, that can cause major problems in your, on your farm, in your soil, in your crop. You've got to keep your sodium levels down. Usually good drainage takes care of that. And then finally, potassium, we really want to see 4% to 8% base saturation K. Many times we're looking at parts per million on a soil test, and here's where this balance thing comes into play. If you've got a really heavy soil, it's going to take a lot of parts per million in order to get some into your plant. And you say, what? How does that work? 
if I have 300 parts per million in a heavy soil versus a light soil, shouldn't it be about the same thing? No, because in that lighter soil, you have a lot less parts per million of calcium and magnesium and all those other things. So it's easier for your plants to find that potassium and get it into your plant. When you've got a heavy soil, generally you've got a huge amount of parts per million of calcium, magnesium, some of these other things, and it's hard to find that potassium. So we need a little bit higher uh, parts per million number in those heavy soils. That's why we look at this base saturation, because it tells us, okay, in relation to everything else, where are we at? Well, once again, the base saturation test on a soil test is incredibly important information to have. So we just really encourage you, wherever you get your soil testing done, make sure you request that a base saturation test gets done as well. Again, that's the measurement of five different nutrients against each other. It's just a percentage. The percentage should always add up to 100%. You're looking at calcium, magnesium, hydrogen, sodium, and potassium. Getting soil fertility improved can really help you get an excellent crop canopy, which can hold out our Weed of the Week. We'll show you what else will stop it coming up next. The Weed of the Week is brought to you by Dow AgroSciences. Finish the fight against tough weeds with the Enlist Weed Control System. Weeds are tough, but we're tougher with unrivaled weed control. Reduced drift and near zero volatility. So, who's tough now? <laughs> Today's Weed of the Week is an annual weed. It's been a problem in small grain fields for decades, but we're gonna talk about how to solve that problem today. The weed is wild mustard. When I drive by a field now and I see mustard, I'm worried that it might be volunteer canola. I really have to take a second look. Now, obviously, if you have identified those two weeds and, and you're around them all the time, you know, oh, it's fairly easy to tell those two apart. But still, it makes me nervous when I see a, a yellow flower out in the field. Uh-oh, do we have canola or have we got wild mustard? If it's wild mustard, I'm not nearly as worried because we have lots of good options for getting it under control. All right, so in wheat, what we would want to start with would be Sharpen. And I realize Sharpen's not the cheapest product out there, but it is good on a lot of different broadleaves. So start with Sharpen, then follow post-emerge with Husky. Wide match is not as good a choice. Use Husky. In corn, I like Verdict Down and Status over the top. You can throw a half pound of atrazine with the Status if you'd really like to. That will boost control just a little bit. And there are a lot of different options in corn and wheat that can get this under control. Well, coming back to the corn too, I would say we talked earlier in the show about how the HPPDs have come way down in price. Throw a little HPPD with your dicamba. Now you've really got something for wild mustard and good residual. In soybeans, we like our three pre strategy. And with all these small seeded broadleaf type weeds, we do an excellent job if we can get Metribuzin, a PPO, and one of the yellows out there to wipe them out before you even see them above ground. And then post emerge in soybeans. This is an easy weed to control because Roundup gets it, Liberty gets it, and Extend or Extend to Max and Genia, they'll get it in Extend crops. That's all the time we have for this week's weed, but Iron Talk is coming up next. Are you looking for an easy way to apply dry powdered products to your stored grain? Do you want to use the applicator recommended by industry leaders for products like Diacon D and other dry powder products? Changing Time CT applicators successfully apply a diversity of products quickly, easily, and accurately. The innovative CT applicators are designed to give you the most accurate application of products such as talc, inoculants, fertilizers, and other dry products. For commercial use or on the farm, you need the applicator industry leaders are using. CT applicators for the changing times. Introducing the SoilMax ZD48, the newest addition to the SoilMax Gold Digger lineup. The first plow designed for smaller class tractors, the ZD48 has been tested on tractors weighing between 10,000 and 16,000 pounds with excellent results. Designed for row crop farms, vineyards, irrigation, and specialty crop farms. The SoilMax ZD48 will install tile up to 48 inches deep as well as install 3 or 4 inch tile. The ZD48 truly opens up the world of tile installation to more farms than ever before. Our Morton is so much more to us than just a building. It's a place where we spend time with friends. It's a place where we hold family gatherings. 
it's become very important to us. Morton Buildings. For work. For life. For generations. Contact us now during our annual sales event to save on your next building. on this line is probably the best in 10 years, both in soil and in the plant. Joe, you've been doing this for a while. What's your take? Well, Don, you take a player like High Energy N, three forms of nitrogen, plus sulfur and iron, with slow release technology, he's making plays all season long. Oh, look at his numbers. He's getting it done. But don't forget about in response. This guy's designed for a quick release nitrogen. It's looking like another championship season for Agro Liquid. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. The AFS Connect Farm Management System from Case IH connects you and only you to the information you need most from your equipment from anywhere at any time. AFS Connect, only from Case IH. Where should you invest your next dollar in equipment? It's coming up in today's Iron Talk. Beginning farmers often ask me where they should invest their money first in equipment at the start of their farming careers. The advice I give applies to all farmers. Look at your return on investment. Let's assume for today's discussion, we're talking about a corn farmer. The equipment he feels he needs includes a tractor, a planter, a sprayer, a combine, a truck, and a strip-till rig. Where should he invest in newer and better equipment? First of all, the truck for hauling your grain is not something where you need fancy equipment at least not to begin with. Your combine needs to be reliable, but it certainly doesn't have to be the first thing that you upgrade. The same can be true with your tractor. It's just not going to add more yield on its own. Timely application of a variety of things with your sprayer can certainly play into yield, but the sprayer doesn't have to be pretty. That leaves the strip-till rig and the planter. With strip-till, there are a variety of ways you can get set up. Yes, there are systems that are better than others, and this would be one thing I'd consider spending money on first as you're creating your seed bed for next year and potentially placing fertilizer at a deeper depth than you could with almost any other tool. Add to that the residue management factor, and the strip-till rig is the second place I'd invest in upgraded equipment on this example farm. Number one for me will likely always be the planter. If you don't get the seed placed right, you just don't get an even stand, and you're always giving up yield. I'd spend time and focus on all the mechanisms that put the seed into the ground at the proper depth and spacing first. Then I'd look at everything else. Don't worry, we're just talking about the first investment in equipment on your farm. There will be more every year for the rest of the time you're farming. There will be time and money to upgrade the rest of your equipment if you focus on return on investment with these early expenditures on your farm. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. The Quick Belt from Norwood Sales is your all-around grain handling solution. Our conveyor-based system uses an 18-inch belt in a 10-inch tube, which minimizes seed damage while moving more than 10,000 bushels an hour. Keep your grain and your farm moving with the Quick Belt from Norwood Sales. That's all the time we have for today's show, but before we go, we want to invite you to tune in to the Ag PhD radio show, where we take your live phone calls each weekday on Sirius XM channel 147 at 2 p.m. Central. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. Soil is nature's filter to keep contaminants out of our water. To learn how farmers manage soil and groundwater, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.